We've been looking at sound going through the air, and the air around us is like a big ocean. And we live at the bottom of that ocean. And that ocean has weight. If we could weigh the air that's on top of us, we'd find that there's 15 pounds on every square inch. And that weight, that air pressure, pushes in all directions. And that's why you don't feel it, because the air pressure inside of you is the same as the air pressure outside. But you can do some pretty remarkable things with air pressure. Now, one of the things that you do with air pressure is in a toy, a little toy pistol that has a dart that has a rubber cup on the end of it, and you call that rubber cup a suction cup. But how does that work? Well, it actually works with air pressure, and this is a, it's a toilet plunger, but we buy them for the show, and it's like a giant suction cup, and I'm going to show you how it works a little bit better. No, 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 no. We buy these for the program, and so it's okay. It's clean. It's never been used. Dan, yeah. you got the wrong one. Remember, we put the red tag on the one we haven't used in the bathroom. This one doesn't taste very good. Uh, yeah. I wonder if he did that on purpose. Uh, much better. Now, what I've done is I've pushed all the air out of there, and the rubber wants to come back to its original shape, but that means the air pressure inside is less than the air pressure outside. And so when I do that, it can't get away. Air pressure. Oh, what are you guys doing? Air pressure. No. That's not air pressure. It is too. No, it's not. What? what? No, y'all are, no, wait a minute. Give me a chance. That's, that's not air pressure. What's the matter? That's, that's excess pressure because your diaphragm is pushing. No. This is called a ping-pong cannon. And you can see why it's called a ping-pong cannon, because it shoots ping-pong balls. Now, we've got this end open. I'm going to roll a ping-pong ball down in here, and I'm going to put my mic in the end so you can hear it rolling down. It'll stop at the end. We've got a little valve down there to keep it from falling out the other end. Oop, oh, it's here. There. Now, we're going to put some tape over each end, some 3M packaging tape, and seal up the ends so the air in here can't get out unless it goes through that little pump down there. We've got a pump here which is going to pump the air out. But that takes a long time, well, several minutes, to pump the air out of that. We should have about 1 800th the amount of air in that tube that there was just a few moments ago. The rest of it has been pumped out. So we have a partial vacuum in here. Now we're going to um, poke this dart. The dart cuts this way and this way at the same time so the air can rush in. It pushes the ping pong ball ahead of it while it rolls down toward the end. And it should be moving uh, maybe five, six hundred miles an hour. So it's very, very rapid. We don't have any idea what's going to happen when it hits the pop cans, but we're going to find out. Now, this is fairly loud, people, so you may want to stick a finger in your ear or both ears. I always use one ear anyway and protect myself a bit. I'm going to fire the cannon, and the ping pong ball will roar down there 600 miles an hour and off towards Fred. Are you ready, people? Here we go. Now, Fred is picking up these cans. We got a big dent in this one and a smaller dent in this one. So they got a good kick when the uh, ping pong ball rushed down. And now we've got a little surprise here for the people. I'm going to open up this can and we're going to see what's in here. The 
ping pong ball. Made it through one side of the can. Thanks for that. What we have here is another demonstration of air pressure, okay? We'll take this, this is just a, a rubber sheet with a, a, a shiny top chair. I want to put it on top of here, I want to push this down, and then it becomes a chair mover. <laughs> Using air pressure, nothing but air pressure, isn't that cool? If I want to put it down here, I just let some air back in. See, what happens is, I push the air out from between them, and as I do that, try to lift this off the top, it kind of like makes it want to bow upward, and it reduces the pressure between the sheet and the chair. The less pressure there, now the bigger air pressure outside pushes these two things together. And so we end up with the ability to move a chair from one place to another. Should you ever need to move your refrigerator, get a great big rubber sheet with a handle on it and move it from one place to another. I've got a device here called the Magdeburg Swing. It works on air pressure also. We've got two transparent discs here, and between the two transparent discs, there's an oversized rubber band laying there. So when I open this valve, air can rush in there. Right now, I've pulled most of the air out, and it just comes apart. But I'm going to take my powerful lungs and pull the air back out again. Now I'm coming up for air. I'm supposed to breathe some every week. Now, there's air pressure out here, the room air pressure. Air pressure here pushing this way, here pushing this way. But in between the two discs, very little air. So it's the effect of squeezing these two things together. Now, look at me carefully. I know this is dangerous, but look at me carefully. I weigh 285 pounds, <laughs> more or less. And we're going to see if that is enough. OK. Bring it back down just a foot or so, Jay. Okay, I'm going to see if it'll be strong, <clears throat> strong enough to hold me. The only thing holding me up is the air pressure on the top and the bottom. How about a little ballet, John? have that down again. I'm going to turn the valve so air can rush in between the two discs again. And when I do, they just fall apart. The only thing holding me up there was some air pressure. Thank you. We've got a similar set of plates like John had. And we've used a mechanical pump to pump the air all out of these. And in doing that, we have enough of the air out that if we wanted to, we could actually lift a small car with these. Now, we've got some people coming up to help us with this. And if I could get Y'all to grab hold of this side. Okay. And y'all to grab hold of that side. Now, what we're going to do is to try to pull the plates apart, not try to pull one side, one team to the other side, okay? Just try and get these plates apart. And then uh, when I ask y'all to quit, you'll need to stop, okay? Right. Okay. So let's see you pull the plates apart. Now, just a minute, just a minute. In order to make this historically correct, 
In Germany, the first time it was ever done, they tr used horses. So the crowd has to stamp their feet and whinny during this demonstration to make it historically significant. Right, let's hear a little whinny. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's pull them apart. Whoa! <laughs> okay. Okay. There whoa. we go. Whoa, whoa, Silver. Okay, now, to show you that it was just air pressure holding these together, I'm going to put my mic down here and open the valve, and when I do, you'll hear the air rush back in, and they just fall apart. Just air pressure. Woo! Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, you've probably noticed we've been boiling water in this flask ever since the beginning of the show. This is just a bucket with some red water in it. We put a little dye in there so maybe you'll be able to see it. And uh, the flask has a little bit of water in the bottom which is boiling. And Jay is going to hand that up to me like so. Steam is still coming out the top. The water is still boiling because the flask itself is hot. I'm going to tip this over. Put this long snout down in this bucket of cold water, and then we're going to watch and talk for a bit. Now, mostly up here is steam. The air gets driven out. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But as the steam turns back into water, the pressure in here goes down, and the outside pressure is now pushing the fluid up the stem. It's right about here, and it's going up. It's not very exciting. It's kind of like watching your money grow at current interest rates. but. When the water gets to the top, the cold water is going to hit the steam, and then all of the steam is going to condense suddenly. That's going to happen right about now, and then things get more interesting. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Now, you can tell there was little air in here. The steam pushed the air out because the, the air wouldn't condense. So everything up here condensed so that the water could fill the jug all the way to the top. Now another way of saying that is, had you been in the jug, you think you have one problem, it's hot in there, but you have two problems. It's hot in there and there's no air to breathe. So think about that during this next demo. We've been boiling water inside this steel barrel for about 15 minutes. And as we boil the water inside there, all the air, the oxygen and the nitrogen and the stuff you need to breathe has been displaced with the steam. They're going to turn off the burners. And I'm going to put a plug in here to seal the barrel up. As I seal it up, what's inside the barrel? Just water and steam, nothing else. No air, no oxygen, no nitrogen, that's it. Right now, the air pressure inside, the pressure inside, is the same as atmospheric pressure, but as that steam cools off, it'll condense back into water, and the pressure inside will become less than the pressure outside. It's going to become less, oh, is it raining? You know, it doesn't rain often in Minnesota in January, but, uh, <laughs> but so as we cool this off, the pressure inside is dropping, the pressure outside is staying constant, so what's going to happen? Now, this is something where you don't want to take your eyes off of the barrel, because it's not subtle. I've seen some of you teachers watching John Barber, and I know what a hunk y'all think he is. What a beautiful man. But don't. <laughs> no, don't watch him. Only watch the barrel. Watching the barrel. Now, actually, nothing is ever going to happen. We're doing this experiment for the psychology department to see how long we can get a large audience to stare at a stupid white barrel. <laughs> yep. One of two things could happen now, boy. And one of them is not very exciting. 
Watch the barrel. Keep your eye on the on barrel. The barrel. Watch the barrel. Watch the barrel. Watch the barrel. Tomorrow you'll give me all your money. Watch the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's pretty serious. How many noticed that the barrel bent? <laughs> <laughs>